Hey guys, welcome to Top of the Chops. Those of you that have seen Top of the Chops before will realise that this episode is a bit shorter than normal. And the reason for that is I've decided to do something a bit different where I'll take a classic riff that went to number one and just teach you how to play that riff alone. So we're going back to 1997 today for Diddy, Faith Evans and 112's track, I'll Be Missing You. Now you might be thinking, why aren't we doing the police version, the original? But the reason for that is because the Diddy version went to number one exactly this time in 1997. So yeah, this is gonna be a nice short and sweet episode. Make sure to grab your guitars. Please hit the subscribe button, the bell icon, and let's get playing. Okay, so before we start the riff, the tuning of this, I think they've um, pitched it down uh, semitone, and when they've done this, it's slightly kind of out with a normal guitar tuning. So I've changed my guitar tuner to, I think, 443 hertz. So if you want to play along with the actual record like I've done, you might want to check your tuning on that as well if your tuner can set to different hertz. So yeah, um, basically we're starting off with sort of like a plucked palm muted thing and it goes all the way through like that so um, we're in the key of G major our first chord is a G major add nine so it's basically first finger on third fret of the low E string middle finger on the fifth fret of the A string and little finger on the seventh fret of the D string so bit of a stretch now, you could do this with your third finger on the D note on the A string, fifth fret, and then have your middle finger on the fourth fret of the G string so that you could play the whole chord. But it's quite a stretch, and for the kind of pizzicato thing I want, um, I want to kind of jump off of the notes anyway, so you get that. Okay, so I've got time to move up with my first finger for that first part, so. I mean, that's a bit exaggerated, but I do play it sort of. Okay, so yeah, that's kind of your pattern. You go in E string, A string, D string, then back down to the A string, and then skip to the G string, and then down the D and A and then back up to the D. And that's kind of the pattern for the first two chords. So. Okay, then we do, well, we do that twice and then we jump down to an E minor add nine. So this is a bit more open. We can use open E, second fret on the A string, fourth fret on the D string, and then open G. So quite a dark sounding chord on its own. Now obviously you can't mute those or cut off those open strings, so they're just gonna kind of cut through, but you can um, do it with the A and the D string, so I kind of get this. It does that twice as well. Same pattern on which string order you're doing. Uh, then we jump up to a C sus two. Now the reason this is called a C sus2 rather than the add nine is mainly because there's no third in the chord. So we're gonna suspend the third and use a D instead, okay? So we're on third fret on the A string, fifth fret on the D string, seventh fret on the G string, and then we move down to the fifth fret on the G string as well, which turns it into a power chord really, so. So this is a different string order as well, and I think this is what it's doing. But we go in A string, D string, G string, then back to the A string, back to the G string, down to the D string, A string, D string. So obviously it's more of a kind of momentum thing when you're doing it, um, taking that down note by note might be hard, but as you start to remember how the riff goes, I mean, this has been out for many, many years and it's a classic, so I'm sure you'll recognize the riff and start singing it along as you're playing anyway. Not singing it along, but you know what I mean, in your head. Um, once you know something really well, it kind of, you're 
fingers don't automatically go there, um, but or your plectrum, but you've got a lot more of an understanding of what's going on in the riff, so it should be a bit easier for you to find that pattern. So it does that on that uh, third fret on the C, then it does exactly the same thing, same, oh no, it's a slightly different picking pattern, but same chord, but on the D, so it's a D sus two now, uh, moved up two frets from where you were, and all we do is change the last pluck to a G string, so you get. So instead of, you got. And then we jump back down to our first chord, so the G add nine. With the same picking pattern as before, okay? So we've got two bars on the G at the beginning, two bars on the E minor, one bar each on the C and D, and then one more bar of the G, okay? So slowly it goes like this. Okay, so that's the whole riff. I know there's a bit more in the, the Police song, but what I wanted to do with these classic riffs is just show you the riff. So you can play that and anyone will recognize it. You can literally play that over and over again, or if you've got your guitar out at a barbecue, we're starting to get a bit more cold now, so probably more like a campfire. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just so recognizable and, and quite easy to play. It is a bit of a stretch, but it's you know really, really interesting chords. Okay, so yeah, have a play around with that and then play along with the real song. If you want to play along with the police song, all you've got to do is move everything up one fret. So if you were doing your E add nine, or E minor add nine, sorry, you'd need to do that on F. So it'd be first fret and your open G would go to a G1. I know you're still living your life after death. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you again next week.